Hey there, drone fans. Rick here again from Drone Valley. Today's clip will be another tech review of a product I think you're going to find pretty cool. It's an outdoor weatherproof LED motion activated security light from a company called Sansi. Now on the channel, I get a chance to review a lot of high tech gear and I'm always on the lookout for things that are going to make my life a little bit easier. Maybe make things a little bit safer, a little more fun, save me a little bit of money. And when I find a product, I spend a lot of time using it myself. And if it's something that I definitely want to spend my hard earned money on, I do a clip like this to explain to you guys why I found some value in it in case you're in the market for a similar product. Now this guy ticks all those boxes. It's built by a company who's been around for a long time. It's got a lot of high tech features built into it that separated from others in the market. And I'm going to spend time talking about all that. But I want to start off with sort of explaining the technology behind it. Now, lighting is something you may not give a lot of thought to in your home. I think about it an awful lot because, first off, I'm a nerd, so I'm always thinking about technology. But more importantly, if you look at your energy bill every month, the vast majority of the money you're spending on energy goes to lighting. And it doesn't go to lighting necessarily that's left on and people forgot about. It just goes to lighting that you're using every day. And the technology behind how you light a room has changed dramatically over the last 15 years. And maybe you've tried a couple of solutions out there. So let's take a look at the history of lighting really briefly. For the longest period of time, we've been using incandescent light bulbs. Ever since they were invented by Thomas Edison, all of us have been screwing in incandescent light bulbs, turning them on and just using those to light a room. That's a horribly inefficient method for lighting a room. An incandescent light bulb is really nothing more than a piece of specialized fabric that's lit by short circuiting the voltage that's going into that outlet. So essentially what you're doing is heating up that short circuit enough to generate light. It's actually white hot inside that bulb. Horrible way to light your home and you're wasting a lot of energy using those incandescent bulbs. Now if you've experimented with other technologies for a while, fluorescent lights were out for a while. And again, as new tech comes out, I try it in the home. So I had a ton of fluorescent light bulbs that I ran around the house changing all my light bulbs to fluorescence. I wasn't really happy with them. I found that they made noise, they were dimmer than the actual incandescents I'd replaced, and they were efficient, but they cast a really weird light. They weren't, they weren't as nice as far as the pattern of light that they cast in the house. So I used them for a while because we saved a lot of money with them, but I was never really a fan of them. Now, LED lighting, which this is based on, came out a good 10 or 15 years ago, and the challenge with LED lighting out of the, you know, in the beginning out of the gate was that it wasn't real... Um, soft. It was very harsh. It had a very blue light to it. It was dim. You had a hard time getting really bright LEDs. They were expensive and they were complicated. Um, that's changed dramatically in the last five years. There are companies out there like Sansi that have perfected LED lighting. And what has changed dramatically, I guess, is the way that the bulbs are created, or I should say the lenses are created, that amplify that LED lighting. They've made them much more of a softer white, so it's very, very similar to what you get with daylight or incandescent bulbs. And they've just really improved their usability in the home. Now, this one is based on the latest generation of LED technology. And I'll spend a little bit of time talking about what separates it from the pack. But before I do, let me explain the company behind this product. So if you look for LED lighting out there, there are a ton of companies that make it. You can get on the internet, go to Amazon, go wherever you want, and you'll find hundreds of companies that produce LED products. The challenge is a lot of those companies are not really in the business of lighting. They're sort of companies that buy an LED from one company, they build a housing, they plug them together and sell them to you. You don't know if they're going to be around a year from now. Sansi, the company behind this, has been around for a long time. They've been in LED technology, not only for lighting products, but for large billboards. So if you go to Broadway, a lot of the light, uh, the billboards that are up in Broadway are built by these guys. They make very specialized lighting for big buildings and industrial and commercial use. So for them to come out with a consumer product like this really gives me the confidence in knowing that I've got a company here that has been in the business for a while and really understands how to build a quality product. So that's the company behind it. The product itself is um, an incredibly cool product when compared to others, and I'll talk about that in a second. But before I do, let me show you what you get with the kit. So when you buy this product, it comes with everything you need to install it in your home. You've got a really nice manual that explains how to install it, how to mount it, how to wire it, all that. You've got uh, a nice rubber mounting ring. So when you bolt this thing up to a standard like four inch or round wall box on the outside of your home, you'll use this in between the back of this and that box to insulate it even further to keep all the water from getting inside that box. They include a new set of wire nuts. That's pretty nice. Even though you can you know, use the ones that were there before if you're replacing a light, having a new set of them really makes it easy. A couple of screws to hold this bracket on. This bracket fits across that that round box or that four inch box you're gonna mount it to. And then once you've mounted it, you take this screw, put it through the center of that and bolt it onto this. Now there's one extra piece here. I'm laughing a little bit because it took me a while to figure out what this is for. Now, I'm not sure they talk about it in the manual. I'll have to go back and review it, but it looks like a little white cup. And I'm like, well, that's kind of cute, but what's that for? Is it just something extra in the box? Well, it turns out that they've thought through you mounting this on your wall. And once you put the screw through here, this little white piece fits in that hole 
to completely waterproof that, that screw tip. Now, you'd think to yourself, why do I care about that? Well, honestly, over time, that little hole is gonna be a great place for bugs to get into and dust and dirt. And then if you wanna pull this thing off the wall later on, you've gotta fight your way through all that mess to get to the screw behind it. So having this cap on there just completely waterproofs the whole thing. And I know it's a small detail, but when I see something like that from a company, it really puts me in the mind of knowing these guys are thinking about me as a consumer and they're thinking through everything I'm going to do with this and they've taken the extra step to have a mold built for this and have this thing actually cast to include in the kit. So they really care about your, your usability of this and the long-term use of the product. So pretty cool. All right, so let me talk about the product a little bit. Now, I've got some close-ups coming up that'll show you a little more about these features, but in essence, what you're getting with the product is a, a ready-to-mount system where it's completely sealed in the back. You've got plastic on the back, three wires coming out of it, standard casing here that'll fit on, again, a round box or a four-inch square box. I recommend the round box because it'll made up perfectly with that, but everything is mounted and ready to go. These two lenses are completely, you know, you can move them up and down. You can put them exactly where you want to put them in the backyard. You've got... Uh, 3,400 lumens of light power, which is a lot of power. It only draws 30 watts of power, but it can produce the equivalent of 250 watts of incandescent lighting. So if you've got 275 watt light bulbs in your backyard or floodlights in your backyard, this is 250 watts versus the 150 for two of those. Uh, it's got a motion detector on it, and I'll explain that in more detail in the next section, but you can swing this to any direction you need. There's sensitivity adjustments on the back. It can be manually activated, which means you can use a wall switch to turn it on, or you can set it up to be automatic where it's gonna look for motion in a particular area. When it sees motion through that area you're paying attention to, it'll turn on for one minute, five minutes, or 10 minutes, and you get to adjust that on the bottom. You can also adjust the sensitivity, and I'll talk about that in the next section as well. What separates this from the competition, a couple of things. First off, the lights, because LED lights um, are much more efficient than incandescent or fluorescent lights. They're also tremendously durable, so you should have this on your wall for a long, long time. Incandescent lights, standard light bulbs, typically will last you a year or two. If you're using a normal switch, they'll probably fail more quickly than you would if you were on a dimmer because obviously bringing that current and that inrush of current across that filament can blow them out pretty quickly. So with this, I like it because I'm a cheapskate and I'm lazy. So having something like this that's much more efficient when I'm using it and knowing I'm going to keep it a lot longer than changing eight or 10 incandescent bulbs means I'm saving money, not only in the replacement bulbs, but also in the, the energy I'm using when I'm, when I'm using it. The other thing is I'm lazy. I don't like getting up on a ladder in the backyard changing out those flore uh, the floodlights that are out back. I'd rather just put something up, let it stay up there for a decade, and if it does fail, I'll take it down and replace it at that point. One other key difference between this one and a lot of the other ones I've looked at, and I researched this thing pretty extensively. I've been using this for a couple months now in the house, and I've got a bunch of them mounted. One big difference between this and a lot of the ones I looked at was you'll notice, first off, they've got two panels, which means I can adjust these in completely different directions, which is really nice because I can throw some light down on a walkway over here and maybe some accent lighting against the bush or another walkway in that direction. Some of the other ones didn't have those dual panels. They had one single panel where all the LEDs were mounted on it, and pretty much wherever I pointed it, it gave you almost like a searchlight focus on where that light went, but didn't cast a lot of light outside of it. It was a really harsh light. Having these two panels means that if I need attention with light in a particular area, I can point them in the same direction, but I like the fact that I can flip them vertically or horizontally to sort of create the pattern of light I need in the backyard. Another key difference is because these are individual lights, you'll see them on here, they're ceramic based, which means they're gonna last a long time. A lot of the companies that build inexpensive solutions like this use plastic bases, and these things get hot. So over time, that base is gonna melt. This is a ceramic based product, which means it's gonna last a lot longer than the other guys through the summer, through the winter, through any kind of rain you've got, completely weatherproof. But also another key difference is these lights are not all part of one printed circuit board. Each of these light modules individually have their own printed circuit board underneath. And why that's important is because heaven forbid one of these goes out, you don't want to lose the entire panel. If you lose one of these on this particular unit, you'll still have plenty of light with the other seven that survive or six that survive. So you can kind of keep it up there even if LED goes bad. Some of the other units I looked at, they were all one a converged unit. So if I lost one of the LEDs or the printed circuit board was damaged for some reason, everything went out and I'd have to change the whole unit out. So they really thought this through from a lot of different ways. I like it a lot. I've been, again, using it for quite some time and it's really just doing the job for me really well. I love the fact that it's got a motion sensor on it as well. I probably should talk a little about that. So this can give you a 180 degree attention span. So it's going to give you as wide as you want to see anything moving through the area. You also have sensitivity on the bottom, which will give you the range. So basically you're looking down at a particular area. 
and you can extend that range out up to 50 feet. Now, I would caution you that if you've never used a motion sensor before, you don't want it super sensitive, because every time a squirrel runs through that area that you're tracking, or a leaf blows through in some cases, it's gonna turn on the light, and it's gonna drive you nuts, because it's gonna be blinking on and off all night. So, you can put it in test mode, go out back, you know, have your son or your daughter walk through the area while you're up on the ladder making the adjustments to see exactly what that that zone of attention would be back there for it to turn on. You'll get used to that over time. But I love the fact that it'll go out to 50 feet and it's got 180 degree uh, sensing that way. Now the way this thing works is it looks for differences in temperature. So it's got the motion sensor in there that's looking for your warm body or an animal's warm body walking through the cold air next to it and it triggers on that. One other nice feature they've got built in is a daylight sensor on the end so it knows day from night so that during the day if somebody goes through that zone it's not gonna turn on and waste energy there. It's only gonna come on at night. One last feature, which is a big difference between this and a lot of the others, most of the others, you have to get up on the ladder and decide, is it in manual mode, which, which means can I turn it on and off with a switch from inside the house, or is it in automatic mode? You have to decide that with a switch. If you put it in automatic mode, and you turn the switch on from inside the house, it'll only come on for whatever preset time you've got. And that's a pain, because if you're having a party in the backyard, you want to be able to sort of have it in automatic mode most of the time, but every now and then you're going to want it to stay on once you turn it on. And with those other models, you can't do that. You've got to get up on the ladder and put it in manual mode. With this one, there's a way to trigger manual mode through the light switch. So you turn it off for a couple of seconds, turn it back on, and that's all explained in the manual. So what that means is I can have it in automatic mode most of the time, which is exactly what I want, but when I'm having a party out back and I want the lights on all the time, I can go inside to the light switch and very simply put it in the manual mode and keep it on as long as I need to. So they've really thought through everything, which is something I really like. Um, I'm going to give you a couple of close-ups now to show you what it looks like. Then I'm going to take you outside, show you how I mounted it in one section of the house. And if I'm lucky, I'll try and give you some video clips of me walking into the area and turning it on at night. We'll see how that turns out. Then I'll come back with some conclusions at the end. But that's pretty much it for an overview. Stay tuned and I'll give you some close-ups to show you how the unit looks when you get really close to it. Now we'll take a closer look at the unit itself, and I've got it flipped over on the table. So you're looking at the back of the housing assembly here, and you can see they've got a piece of plastic that shields the electronics inside from any of the elements. They also include a really nice rubber gasket that's custom fit for it. I suggest you use this, because when you mount this onto the box that's on your house or on a wall, this will actually get squeezed as this is tightened into the box to form a perfect seal around the outside to virtually eliminate any water from leaking in there to get to the electronics behind it. Here we have the motion sensor. You see a couple of different knobs and switches on the bottom of this. This one right here determines how long the light will come on, and it's also got a test mode, so it's over to the right. That's the test mode where when you first put it up, you can adjust the range with this knob for the sensing area that you want to have this thing pay attention to. And then there are three other settings, one minute, five minute, and ten minutes, and that has to do with the auto functionality of the product. So when you put it in one of these modes, when it senses movement within the area you've defined, it'll turn on either for one minute, five minutes, or ten minutes. And then this range adjustment helps you determine exactly how much space you want to cover. You'll spend a little bit of time fooling around with this in test mode when you first install it. And the challenge is if you make it too wide an area, anything that walks through that area is going to constantly be turning the light on. So you'll want to kind of zero that in to just the specific area you want to pay attention to in your backyard or wherever you happen to mount this thing. Then the last thing on the far end over here is a daylight sensor. What that does is essentially detect daylight so that this doesn't turn on during the day and waste electricity. So at night, this will know that it's night time. If you have it in automatic mode, it'll react to whatever it sees coming through the area you've got the motion detector paying attention to. And you can also move it in the manual mode as well and turn it on from inside the house. Uh, three wires off the back, very straightforward. And again, I'll caution you once more that if you're not good with electronics and maybe you're a little bit unsure of how to connect these, definitely get an electrician because remember, you're going to be on top of a ladder in most cases mounting this thing. And the last thing you want to do is get zapped by one of these wires and be airborne. But if you're going to install it yourself, it's pretty straightforward. You'll find there'll be three wires in most of the outlets that you'll want to connect this up to. The black wire is the hot wire from the house. The white wire is the neutral, and the green is the earth ground. You'll see probably two or all three of these wires in the fixture you're going to mount this to. What I'd recommend again is make sure you turn the electricity off before you even open up the box you want to mount this thing to. Once you're sure the electricity is off, go one by one on these wires. I typically go with the earth ground first, then I go to the neutral here, and then I go with the hot wire. And there's wire nuts included with the kit that'll help you make that connection. If we take a quick look at the bulbs themselves, now 
This is a pretty interesting unit because I mentioned before that a lot of these units, what they'll do is actually have all four of these LEDs mounted in one printed circuit board. And the challenge there is that that one printed circuit board could fail and you'll lose all the LEDs. This has four separate LED assemblies in each of the sides. And what's nice about that is, you know, over time, if you lose one of the LEDs, the rest of them will still function. And that guarantees you'll still have some lighting in your backyard. What I don't like about some of the less expensive units where they're all part of one printed circuit board is if something goes bad on that printed circuit board, you can lose an entire side, which really dims that ability of this to light your backyard. So kind of a cool fixture there. And it does come in black and white. I've got it in white because it fits my house perfectly. Uh, all my other fixtures are white. So that's pretty much it. Uh, here's the sensing area for the unit. You're going to want to point this in whatever direction you want to pay attention to. So if you've got this mounted on the back of your house, I've got it upside down right now, but you're going to want to point this at the ground and again, zero this in on the area that you want to pay attention to, to have these lights turn on automatically. I installed one of the Sensei lights on the house just above my garage door and the intent here is that it'll sense when a car pulls up to the house and it'll turn on and provide plenty of illumination so people aren't stepping out of a car into a dark driveway. Now I've got the attention of that infrared detector really tight up against the house because I don't want to turn it on every time somebody pulls into the driveway or a squirrel or a chipmunk runs through. I really want to pay attention to the area right in front of the garage door and again provide the illumination needed to enter the house. So let me show you how tightly I've got that set up. Again, I'm here, it's not sensing me. When I get close enough with the car to right about here, it'll turn on. Now, the car is gonna be hotter than I am and it's gonna be bigger than I am, so it actually catches the car somewhere around here. But what's nice is because I can sort of direct where that light goes, I have plenty of light on the ground for people getting out on either side of the car. I also like that if I walk up, maybe I park over here and I walk up to the house and use the keypad, it provides plenty of light to get to the keypad and get me in the garage with no issues. Now I could change that. I could take that infrared detector and point it further out in the garage and crank up the gain on it, but then it would see every car coming and leaving the garage uh, or in the driveway even, or every little animal that ran through would be turning on and off all night. And that's not what I'm looking for. So for me, that's the perfect setup. And again, I've got it on test mode right now. So it only comes on for a short period of time and then it turns off. But I like it on for about 10 minutes. That gives people plenty of time to get out of the car, take the groceries out of the trunk, whatever they have to do. And then it'll turn off when they're finished. So pretty cool light. And again, very tight, nothing here. As soon as I get close enough, boom, it comes on. So I like it an awful lot and it works really, really well. That's all I have for today, so thanks an awful lot for watching, and hopefully you found this clip helpful. If you have questions about anything I've covered today, please drop them in the comments below, and I promise to get back to you as quickly as I can. I also have a link below to this particular Sansei fixture in case you want to add a little exterior lighting to your home. If you are in the market for any kind of LED lighting, these guys are monsters in the space, and they build a ton of different products, so definitely give the company a look. I've used a bunch of the products, and I like them an awful lot. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please consider hitting that subscribe button down in the corner there. I have a ton more clips coming on a wide range of high-tech products, and I'd hate for you to miss something. This way you'll be notified when we post our next clip. So that's pretty much it for today. Thanks again, and until next time, happy flying. Thank you.